The intent of this video is to estimate the bomber loss rate if Germany had developed and deployed a flat gun projectile proximity fuse. This study is in response to comments from the channel's video titled German Air-to-Air -Air Rocket Combat Effectiveness. Let's start by reviewing existing German anti-aircraft flat guns. Flat guns are characterized by their size as either light, medium, or heavy. Heavy flat guns are 75 millimeter caliber in size or greater. Only heavy flat guns have the capability Ability to reach U.S. heavy bombers attacking from altitudes between 20 and 30,000 feet. This chart outlines characteristics of the German heavy and light anti-aircraft guns. The 88 millimeter caliber gun is the most common and will be the focus of this study. There is lots of data supporting this premise. For example, this table from an Army Evaluation Board document titled Flak Defenses of Strategic Targets in Southern Germany tabulates the heavy caliber flak guns defending Munich. 84% of the 304 AA guns are 88 millimeter caliber. The 88 millimeter projectile's muzzle velocity equates to 2,735 feet per second, or Mach 2.45. The projectile weighs 20.2 pounds and the rate of fire is 15 rounds per second. Additional characteristics of the projectile are shown on this page from a 1943 War Department technical manual titled German 88mm Anti-Aircraft Gun Material. The explosive fill equates to 1.9 pounds. The projectile's wall thickness varied from 0.56 inch to 1 inch, as discussed on this page from a 1962 U.S. Army Medical Department study titled Wound Ballistics. When adopted for the anti-aircraft role, the projectile was fitted with a ZTZS-30 time fuse. Characteristics and a cutaway of the fuse are listed on this page from a document titled German Artillery and Fuses. The fuse was adopted in the 88 and 105 millimeter caliber anti-aircraft projectiles. Its runtime can be set up to 30 seconds. The fuse was detonated by time countdown only, not proximity, not barometric, not impact. If the projectile impacted the bomber, its kinetic energy would usually be sufficient to punch through the bomber. This graph shows various trajectories the 88 millimeter projectile can take depending on the elevation of the gun from a 1943 enemy weapons document. The x-axis is a horizontal range from 0 to 15,000 meters. The y-axis is the altitude from 0 to 12,000 meters. The line of the side of the gun is listed from 5 to 85 degrees. The solid lines are the projectile's trajectory. In this case, the projectile attains an altitude of 8,000 meters if fired from a flat gun elevation of 55 degrees. The ground artillery gunners would estimate the traveling center of the formation position and set the gun's azimuth, elevation, and fuse time duration to detonation using data from this chart. Let's next determine the losses the 8th U.S. Army Air Forces suffered due to flak alone. This chart from a declassified 1945 document titled Statistical Summary 8th Air Force outlines the 8th's fighter and bomber loss rate. To assess the impact flak had on bomber losses, we will need to recreate this chart with the following changes. Heavy bomber losses only, no medium bombers. Need to remove bomber losses due to enemy aircraft and other categories. This table from a 1945 Office of Statistical Control document titled Army Air Forces Statistical Digest lists the number of bombers and fighters lost in the European theater. Extract this column from heavy bombers lost due to ground flak. The number of credited sorties by month and year can be found on this table. The results of processing the data can be seen on this chart. The x-axis is a month and year. The y-axis is a percentage of 8th Army Air Force's B-17s and B-24s lost per month due to ground flak. Bomber attrition from flak varied from zero to a peak of 1.8% in October of 1943. The Schweinfurt II ball bearing attack occurred during this month. It took around 3,000 flak rounds to bring down a bomber. So what would have been the bomber loss rate had German flak guns been fitted with proximity-triggered fuses in lieu of timed only? Proximity fuses are also called VT fuses. This video describes the VT fuses in combat. Once in flight, the fuse sends out radio waves, which are its feelers, continually probing the space around the shell in search of a suitable target. When the shell passes close to a target, such as an airplane, the radio waves are reflected back to the fuse, where they trigger a firing circuit and explode the projectile. VT brought down its first enemy plane, a Japanese dive bomber, on 5 January 1943.
The army fuse, referred to in the European theater as Posit, first saw action in the defense of London against the flying bomb attack of June to August 1944. The VT fuses and American fire control equipment were supplied to both the British and the United States anti-aircraft guns deployed in the operation. The increase in bomber attrition can be estimated by assessing the impact the U.S. Navy deployed 5-inch guns had on high-altitude kamikaze aircraft adopting either the timed or VT fuses. This chart from an April 1945 United States Fleet document titled Anti-Aircraft Action Summary Suicide Attacks outlines the two common types of attacks. During October and November 1944, the Japanese kamikaze attack from high altitude. In December 1944 and January 1945, they shifted to low altitude attacks. The high altitude attacks better represent the high altitude bombing environment in the European theater. This image shows a typical flight profile of a high altitude kamikaze attack. This table outlines the combat effectiveness of various Navy guns had on kamikaze attacks from October 1944 through January 1945. The Navy's 5-inch guns with standard time fuses are represented by this column and proximity fuses in this column. The values circled represent the number of rounds to kill a high-altitude kamikaze for both timed and VT fuse projectiles. The proximity fuse 5 inch projectile is 4.75 times more combat effective than a time fuse projectile, where combat effectiveness is defined as the number of rounds per kill. So, instead of 3,000 flak rounds per bomber's loss, this value would drop to 632. And instead of 2,435 bombers lost due to flak, this value would increase to 11,566. The value of bomber loss does not take into account the reduction of bombers available for sorties by additional flak losses. These losses, though, would greatly hamper bombing operations. To mitigate a German VT fuse threat, the 8th could resort to some countermeasures. This would include formations could be revised from flying an anti-fighter stagger to an anti-flak diamond, as shown on this image from a 1945 B-29 formation requirements document. Formations could saturate the AA defenses by converging over the target in mass and reduce the combat box's trail. Flak batteries could be attacked with cluster munitions to disable the guns and kill flak gun personnel. Anti-proximity electronic countermeasures could be developed to cause the fuses premature detonation or mask the bomber's reception. Better routing around flak positions. More target sighting by radar. Flak was less of an issue during blind bombing missions. So how close were the Germans in deploying an operational proximity fuse? This chart from a July 1945 21st Bomber Command Air Intelligence Report discusses the German proximity fuse program. The Germans were six months away from a proximity fuse deployment. In summary, Germany did not deploy operational proximity fuses in World War II. A VT fuse would be 4.75 times more combat effective than a standard time fuse. Bomber losses to German proximity fused AA projectiles would be unsustainable, but these losses may be somewhat mitigated by the countermeasures discussed. Do you agree with the results and or found this content worthy? Please consider liking, commenting, and or subscribing to the channel, World War II, U.S. Bombers.